Welcome to Teresa Guignot's uh, subscription of yoga practices. This is the 45 minute practice and I'm feeling quite rambunctious because I just finished a whole slew of accounting, paperwork, updating, composting, and I'm sure a lot of you have been doing some of that stuff too because this is the time astrologically for purging, for change. So that means really clarifying your path. So let's get started in this 45 minute practice. I really feel an urgency to remind yourselves that releasing means twisting, okay? So come to sit. I'm so excited when I come to the mat because I know that I'm gonna feel amazing after class. And just so you all know, this is a very fluid practice of whatever in the moment is vibrationally in my frequency. And I hope you can take a little piece of this practice with you and remind yourself that this is a yoga for recovery. Less is more, slow down, meet your needs, do what is best for you, and observe the breath, most important piece, okay? So let's begin with just sitting in your comfortable zone, whatever that may look like for you, and let's begin by registering what that breath is feeling like in the gut. I've been massaging some clients and realizing that there's not that, you know, connection to breath. It's so common to get caught up in the, so we bring it down. That's what this practice is about, bringing it down into the belly and slowing down. So notice your breath. You can close your eyes. You can keep your eyes wide open. You decide, feel your belly. Notice when we breathe into the fullness of our lungs, it does press down and it activates that diaphragm, which massages your major organs, which creates a rest and digest. Think about that, slowing down in a sense of like, don't worry about the shoulda, woulda, coulda, don't even go there. Just be here right now. So noticing that breath, I love to rub my belly and say thank you and feel the sensations. About 10 more breaths at your own little space and energy and time of how you wish to create this. It's an invitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Less is more. Let your shoulders relax. Let your mind be open in clarity. In a sense, it, let, it, let it just shuffle away some of those, you know, really tight energetic, you know, tensions that we hold on to. Suffering is caused by us holding on. So let go and just a couple more fluid breaths of awareness into the fullness of your lungs, slowing it all down. Very important piece of wellness is breathing, yawning, releasing the anxieties. Mm -hmm. Good. And then I invite everyone just to take one hand to the heart and one hand to your gut and say thank you, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude for your existence. For even though you may feel so confused and surreal at this time during this curious global time, Note that you are here for a divine purpose, a reason. There is a gift that is within you that is meant to be shared for the greater good. It could be something as simple as, you know, counting numbers. You're really good at that, organizing things, uh, lending a, uh, your heart and opening yourself up and being a good listener, being a best friend. Being a yoga guide, such as I am, I love guiding and sharing for the greater good. Whatever your vocation, whatever you do, I hope you do what you love and love what you do. So just taking note of your heart and your gut. These are two really major pieces of oh, our love, our heart center, and our personal power. And if you're confused, you're not sure, that's why you're here with at this practice at this time with me, it's okay to be open, to be not knowing. That is okay. There's no right or wrong. Just be, just be, and let's breathe together. Another five more breaths here. Feel your heart, feel your, your gut. Oh, you can yawn. Yeah, 
roll those shoulders back, lift your heart a little bit more. Good. And then let's bring your hands together in union at the heart center. Union meaning the yoke, yoga, yoking, bringing oppositions together at the heart center, creating a sapphic line of energy, bringing all these processes and all these energies together and just finding a beautiful common ground at the center of your heart. And then let us chant the very beautiful sound of OM. One big, big, beautiful OM. Take a deep breath in. Mm -hmm. The sound of consciousness, the sound of love. When you're ready to release your hands and slowly blink your eyes open and welcome into the studio space, let us now start to roll the shoulders. I'd like to invite your legs out, give them a little windshield wipe, all that good stuff. So today, just really getting into your physicalities and noticing where your body is aligned and where it feels a little out of alignment and just really processing yourself into spaces that feel most optimal for you. First of all, take your right heel in towards your perineum, take the left leg out and just rock in your inner thighs back and forth. Twisting, noticing what you notice, just make it more fluid. Notice your shoulders. You could bend this knee if that feels better for you. And then let's invite our arms out in front. Grab a hold of opposite elbow and then reach your arms up overhead. So this flexion could be, can be quite a discomfort for some of you. So if you need to grab your forearms or Guinness grip your fingers, that's a great way to start this as well. And lifting up your heart and noticing if you could just take those arms a little further back in flexion. No matter what that left leg is doing, what your right leg is doing, maybe have it propped up. Feel that energy and then start to bend side to side in any way that feels a little fluid for you and twisting. Yeah, just like that. Pull your hands isometrically or your elbows isometrically so you really feel your shoulders. And if you feel like your neck is being compromised, more forearms, organist grip. If that's too much, take your hands in front of you. That works well. Just a couple more breaths. Noticing what you notice. Do as you wish. I love the undulation of this. Nice. And then exhale, release your right hand down on the mat, bend the left knee, and then lift your bum up onto your heel. Open up your arms really bright and wide, and then lift your bum up. And then wave that left arm around and let your bum come back down. If you prefer to lift the bum up and reassess that left leg and stay up, that's your personal preference. Plant or flex your right foot. You could be down here, that feels awesome too. Two more breaths, just opening up the shoulders, waking up the whole body, good, and then release your bum to the mat if it were up, take your left heel in, take your right leg out. So reminding yourself that your hamstrings are your best friend, so don't treat them like they're not. So bend your knee if you need to. Circumvent around, noticing how your pelvis feels with the arrangement of the shape of your legs. So important to understand your mobility and strength and mobility is what we're doing here, strengthening ourselves, enveloping and understanding of our mobility by getting into the foundation of it. Okay, so just swirling around. What does that look like for you in the leg shape? Oh, cracked my back there. Good, and then let's invite our arms out and you do as you wish, the non-habitual way, so it feels awkward. Ganesh grip, whatever feels good to you. And then playfully take those arms up into flexion. So when we go like that, it's flexion. And notice that. Wave them around, move your jaw. Make sure your neck is free from any obstruction of the arms. If you're feeling like you're all like, this isn't feeling good, feel good then. This is meant to feel good. How do you feel when you move your arms? Is it feeling, oh, there, that's a good... We call it a stretch, but it's not really a stretch. It's an opening. It's a contraction. There is no stretch. Your, your muscles are not rubber bands, just so you know that. <laughs> okay? Good. And then exhale that left arm down at a on the diagonal from the hip and then start to lift your hips up, your bum up onto your left heel. Wave your right arm around, big yawn of your heart, open up. And then maybe you can lift your hips up completely and reassess your right leg if that feels good to you. And what does that represent? What does that feel like? Where are you in this? Are you feeling freedom? Are you feeling a little sticky? Maybe you want to stay down here. Two more breaths. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember, breath is the common denominator. When you're ready to release down, no matter what we're doing, come back to the breath. 
Now let's take the legs back and we will go into tabletop. A lot of you know that you've been practicing with me for a while. If I'm talking fast, I don't, I need to slow, choose to slow down. <sighs> tabletop, just for a moment. So once you find your tabletop, move your bum towards your toes, your heels with your toes curled under and feel the back of your toes, just like that. Good. And then slip your shoulders up over your wrists and we're going to play with the left leg straight back, just straight back. Hover the right knee up off the floor just for a moment and feel the structures, the strength of your arms and then lower that right knee back down. Now playfully today, taking that left knee and moving it around and noticing how that feels just to take it up and move it around. Knit the belly button and keep the hands really rooted down and notice. And it can be a, just a real fluid dance of your choice. Good. And then exhale, release the left knee, extend the right leg, hover the left knee up off the mat. Just take a moment to do that. Feel the structures of those hands pressing the floor away. Release the left knee and play and float your right leg around. So when we practice yoga, we're hugging in. You hug the muscles to the bone. Move your jaw around. That feels good, whatever feels good. So it's like a yawning. It feels good to do this, especially being at the desk for quite a few uh, amount of hours. Release the right knee, sit back onto your toes, literally get into your toes. And I do this in a lot of our episodes. Rise up, now plant or flex your feet so your big toes touch and your knees come wider. Now this is where a lot of us are, you really start to gain weight during the COVID and stuff like that. So really toning the belly button in and lengthening your tailbone down towards your knee creases and then pressing into your shins and leaning back. So we're strengthening, we're putting some hugging muscles to the bone and putting some, putting some energy into pushing down into the floor with the shins. So as you press the shins into the floor, you can rise up just like that. Do that a couple more times at your own pace. Strengthen. Yeah. Good. And then sit back on your heels. Here, we're going to come back into a tabletop. Slide the left knee up towards your left wrist. Take your left shin across the midline and then wiggle your right leg straight back. So a pigeon prep pose. Lean into your left hip. Take your left hand, press it into the floor and let your right knee bend out to the side and open up this right arm and reach it up as high as you can. So I know I went into this a little quickly, but press the left shoulder back, left hand into the floor and reach that right arm up. Good. Now release the right hand slide and you can see this in the bird's eye view so i didn't need to start on this side i'm give you my back side first slide the left leg straight out towards the right take both hands out in front of you now really extend that left uh, that right leg straight back on the toe pads press into both hands press into the outer edge of your right foot secure your legs nice and strong and straight and then lift your hips up oh i snuck you into that one didn't i Waddle your hips around, press into the outer edge of your left foot and the balls of the right foot. Lower the left hip down. You've got it. Oh yeah. Release this right hand so you can slide the left knee back towards your left wrist and then come back up into your pigeon prep. That was a little sneaker, wasn't it? Come up onto your hands, lift yourself by pressing the floor away and pick up that left leg and then step back into a downward facing dog. That's it, just like that. So the practice today, do as you are able to fit yourself into those positions, mindfully of your ability. Good, slowly come back into a tabletop. <sighs> Sit back onto your shins, open your knees, big toes touching. Rise up, lengthen the tailbone, secure yourself and lean back. And as you lean back, you wanna press your shins into the floor to strengthen those quads. So we're hugging muscle to the bone. Bone is being hugged by all those beautiful muscles. There we go, just like that, one more of those. So really breathing into that space, good. And then when you're ready to lower your bum back down, tabletop, let's take that Right knee up towards that right wrist. Take the shin across the midline. Extend that left leg. You've got it. A little pigeon prep. Lean your hips 
towards the right, bend the left knee, secure your right hand, and open up. So you're opening up your chest, opening up. We're just playfully getting into like, oh yeah, there it is. Open up, good. Release the left hand. Now lengthen your right leg straight across, then the left leg. This is where it's gonna get tricky. Both hands are down, so I'm going to extend the left leg through the balls of the foot and the outer edge of the right foot, press into the floor, lift my hips up. There, that's it. So you're squeezing, you're hugging your muscles to the bone, knitting that belly button in, and just giving yourself some little play time here. Yeah, feel that energy, good. And then exhale, release your right hip, slide that left shin or right shin back in, find that pigeon prep. It's not an easy one, I know. And then noticing what you notice as you just rock in your hips. Good. Now instead of going back into a tabletop, this time I'm gonna slide your left leg forward, lay down onto your back, and you don't need to have a blanket there if you don't need it. From here, take your hands, secure them on your quads, dorsiflex your feet, straighten your arms, knit the belly button in so that you press against the floor and resist your quads. So you're coring in by hugging the muscles to the bone, isometrically working your abs for 10, for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then release. So it's a big contraction going on in there. So like we did down below, prone, now we're gonna do it supine. Take your left knee across, left ankle to the right thigh for shape. This is a really good one for the hips, especially if you've been sitting at the desk all day. Hover your right foot up off the floor. Let your arms just be out at the side. Remove that holster out of the way. And wind shall wipe around. So your right foot is hovered up off the floor and notice those beautiful hips of yours. Good. So from here, we're going to land the right foot back to the mat as close to your bum as possible and then externally rotate, or externally rotate. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Windshield wipe your left foot all the way to the right hip side. Okay, see if you can slide your right leg up a little higher. It creates quite a bit of uh, action in that left hip. So be aware you're not pushing. Back of the skull's down. Right hand goes inside the left knee and press it away. So getting into the shape may take you some time. Take a deep breath in and out and just be in this presentation, this shape that you are meant to be in. Notice what's going on with that hip. There's no pushing, no shoving, just being in your authentic self. Breathe for five. I love this one because it really taps into the side body. And the reason we do these shapes is to get the muscles to their fullest length in your shape and the contraction. So when one thing is expanding, the other side is contracting to support and your bones. So feeling that, some of you may not have that range of motion to resist. That's okay. Just breathe. Oh. Really following your breath. Mm. Nice. And then when you're ready, let's windshield wipe that oh, back up. So you want to be able to strengthen. We're strengthening ourselves as we come up. Float the right foot up off the floor, left leg and right leg, shake them out. Yada, yada, yada. Release your feet to the floor, adjust your sacrum, adjust your shoulders, adjust your occipital, the occiput bone, hands to quads, dorsiflex feet, shins parallel to the floor, resist your quads, and go for that isometrics once again, four, 10, nine. So I'm really resisting, pressing my quads against my hands, hands against my quads, you guys are counting, I'm sure of it, and you're feeling the contraction of your abdominals, hugging the muscles to the bone. Good, three, two, one, and then release. Nicely done. Left foot goes to the floor, right leg externally rotates, right ankle to left thigh. From there, hover your left foot up off the floor, give yourself a little fun windshield wipe. Yeah, oh yeah, I can feel. I was just splitting wood and piling and cutting. Wow. My body feels like that was a new activity, so I'm feeling it today. So really paying attention to your needs, very important. Got it, good. Release the left foot to the floor as close to your bum as you can, and then let this windshield wipe action happen. 
until your right foot lands all the way on the left side. And you, it may be quite a twist for some of you. Be careful that you are not pushing. If you can lift your right quad, excuse me, left quad higher, please do. Take your left hand inside the right knee, press it away, but keep your right shoulder down. I like to close my eyes in this particular posture because I really feel, and I can see in my mind's eye, I feel a little bit deeper when I release the, you know, um, the sight, when I'm not using my sight. I feel more. So just give yourself permission if that feels good to you. It's an invitation always to close your eyes. Full breaths here. Maybe that left hand is resisting against your right quad. Maybe you've adjusted your left quad higher than your hip and you've got a greater twist going on in the side body. Maybe you reach that right arm overhead and that feels really good for you. Just remember it's a dance of your fluidity. Uh, how may you move in a shape is up to yours. Very personal. Breathe your breath. Keep both shoulders down. Back of the skulls down. Wiggle your jaw. Ah, yeah. Good stuff. Mm, why do we do this yoga practice? Because we stay healthy. We connect mind, body, and of course that soul is going yay. When you're ready to win, she'll wipe back up to center using your core strength. Take both legs up towards the sky, shake out those quads, bend your knees towards your chest, and just take a moment to exhale both knees all the way towards the right. See if you can hike them up at a right angle. And if that's too much and your left shoulder comes up off the mat, then that's where you can take your bolster and slide it underneath your shins. Make sure the bolster is handy and it covers your ankle to your knee. And then open up your shoulders the front body by tacking that left shoulder down, bring your arms like monster arms. And from here, especially golfers, everyone's out golfing these days, let's begin to flex the neck up towards the hips. You're looking towards the hip and then take your monster arms over towards the left and just feel that action. Yeah, hold that for five. Keep your chin tucked in for four. You may have a pudgy belly, but that's okay for three, for two. And then slowly let yourself come back down. Open up your arms. Use your belly strength to lift those knees back up to center. And then exhale them to the opposing side. So if you do the opposite side of me, then that's fine. Do you? So if the knees aren't down and that right shoulder's coming up, again, don't be afraid to take your props and utilize them. So the knees can land on that prop, knees higher than your hips. Your heart is open. Got it? Arms come up like monster arms. You can put some oomph into them by hugging everything to the bone, muscles to the bone. Give yourself a big hug. Gently take that chin towards the notch of your throat and then begin to lift that thoracic spine up just as much as you can and twist your arms more towards the right and you'll feel your internal external obliques kick in but keep your head tucked in for five for four for three two and then release shoulders and head open up your arms use your abdominals to bring those knees up to center okay now we're going to play with it i'm going to suggest that we don't use the bolster so i'm going to put mine aside and we're just going to go in the range of motion that works best. So this is an activity that will help those that are now outside slugging in their gardens, maybe golfing. So this is what we're going to do. Exhale your knees to the left and take your arms up, straight up towards the sky, and then up on a diagonal. So your arms and your head, you're lifting them up as your knees go towards the right, twisting. And then inhale everything back up to center. Let your head rest on the mat. And then exhale to the opposing side. So you're lifting up as much as you can. It's going to be a little awkward for those that don't have the strength yet in their thoracic spine or the neck. Inhale back to center. Head rests. Exhale to other side. So literally, the more you can squeeze yourself into that twist, as far over as the knees can go and as far as you can reach your arms to the other side. That's awesome. Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. Full exhalation. Full on. Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. You've got it. See, it's going to be awkward. I understand 
Inhale, center. Exhale, other side. So when you're doing your best, inhale, center. If you're feeling too much neck activity, just twist the legs and the arms, and that's enough. Inhale, center. Exhale to the other side. Again, if you're able to pick yourself up with a strain, good. One more on each side. And let it be playful. It doesn't have to be perfect. Not everyone's favorite. Inhale, center. Good. Now slide your hands or place your hands on your quads. Reassess your neck and your shoulders. Feet are dorsiflexed. Extend your arms and now resist for 10, for 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and then hug your knees to your chest so yes enveloping core hugging everything in and when we're on the mat it makes it maybe that much more powerful for us to get into our core different shapes do different things this one we can really focus on the core let's do that one more time resist quads and without interrupting the neck and you can feel more of this energy happening right here as you resist for 10 for nine, really knit the belly button in and press, press your lower back into the floor. You guys are counting, right? Another five, four, three, two, and then surrender. Good. Let's go back to that original pigeon position. So let's take the left, the right foot down, left leg up. I'll slow down. Left ankle to right thigh, and then slide it over like you gotta go key. So we're getting into that shape. Earlier we did that whole twist, You'll understand in a moment. So from here, that left leg is crossed over your right leg. Heel to the right foot closer to your bum. And then let's lift that right foot up and see if you can wrap the left foot underneath your right ankle or calf. If not, don't worry about it. It's connected. Your bolster is somewhere handy in case you need it. And then from this place, you're going to twist those legs all the way over towards the left excuse me, the right. Now the left shoulder may come up. That is like a sign that you do want to grab your bolster. You get really crafty with grabbing things as a yogi and let that come all the way to the knees. That means the knees all the way to the right and then open up here. Good. So less is more. Find this twizzled action or your shins are parallel, pressing against each other. Hug. Hug, squeeze your inner thighs in uh, towards each other so you're hugging everything in. And then what we're going to do is invite the right arm up towards the sky, grab a hold of the right wrist with the left hand and reach it over towards the left. So again, we're twisting. Some of you in the practice uh, may want to crunch it up a little bit and add some more. Make sure you're not causing any, in, you know, you're not unnecessarily hurting yourself. Keeping your head down is a great option. It's a twist. Just getting into those muscles, letting them do what they need to do for another two. And then one more. Invite your arms open. Using your abdominals, keep your legs squeezed together. See if you can lift them back up. Good. Release your legs up. Shake them out. Left foot to the floor. Right ankle to left thigh. Then slide it over. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Hover the left foot. See if you can wrap your feet. That means your right foot underneath your left calf. If not, you're just shin to shin, really locking your shins together. A lot of you do have quite uh, uh, robust legs. So to your best ability, skirt crossing, I call it, squeeze your legs together, whether your foot wraps or not. And then using your abdominals, let those twizzled legs fall all the way over towards the left. Keep your right shoulder down. That's why I put my bolster there. Because I knew my shoulder would come up. And then from there, your arms come up like monster arms. And what we're going to do is grab that left wrist and just reach it over. And it'll go across your chest, up by your collarbone, up by your throat. And you're just giving yourself a nice twist in a sense. Close your eyes even. Some of you may want to crunch it up. Make sure you're not compromising the integral structures of your being and fatiguing muscles for five, for four, for three, two, and then very mindfully reach those arms up and open them. You've got to use your core, your abdominals, 
to bring those knees back up to center and then shake them up towards the sky. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Good. Cross your ankles. You can hold your ankles, dorsiflex feet, shins or knees, or underneath your knees, or keep your knees nice and wide and feet apart. Roll yourself up into a seat just for a moment. Pause. Let gravity stay, kick in, and feel what you're feeling. Takes a bit, and then swing your legs to the back into tabletop. I'm just going to move my bolster out of the way. The fun part is you're going to go back to what we did at the beginning, in a sense, uh, but we only did one down dog, so reassess your hands as wide as your yoga mat. Hover the both knees, and then lift your hips up into your down dog. Good. So as you bend your knees and blossom your bum, swing your hips from side to side, and you're resisting your hands against the floor, lift your head up and come forward so you can turn your elbow creases to face your index fingers and thumbs, knit the belly button in that much more. And this is where we're going to go into that similar pose that we did before. You'll understand in a moment. Lift through the left leg, bend the left knee, dorsiflex the left foot, shoulders over wrists, bring that left knee towards your chest, then send that left foot towards your right wrist, then heel toe, heel toe, that left foot a little bit more over towards the right. Take your shoulders directly over your wrist and wiggle the right leg back. There you go, see? Now you see where we're going? From here, slowly lower the hip down and pick it back up. Doesn't have to go all the way down. Slowly lower the left hip, pick it up. Okay, now for me today, I'm going to play a little bit more courageously in this one. I'm going to pivot to the inner edge of my right foot and lift that right arm up. Got it? So now I'm giving myself that. Some of you may want to stay here. Some of you may want to lower your hips to the mat, keeping your legs straight. Maybe you're going to reach up through your arm. Maybe it's awkward. You're going to do you, but you want to be able to pick your bum up. Got it? So wherever you are, we're strengthening. We're hugging the muscles to the bone. For another two, more breaths, think three, you got it. Did I say three? One. Release the right hand, pivot to the balls of the left foot, and then recycle that left leg back into down dog. Okay, got it. So take your time, whatever mobility issues that do come up, you decide how to change the shape. When you're ready, let's take the right leg up, Bend the right knee, bring the right knee as close to your chest as you can, shoulders over wrist, and then take that right foot up towards the left wrist to the outer edge of it. Heel toe, heel toe, a little bit further out. From here, reassess that left leg further back so that you can lower your hip, that right hip. So your shoulders are more over your wrists. Lower it down, bring it back up without hurting yourself. Big important piece, lower down, Bring it back up. Now, like I said, I'm going to pivot to the inner edge of my left foot and reach up through that left arm. Some of you are content to be here. Some of you are like, oh, I'm going to go here. Make sure you reassess that left leg and find out what you need to do for you. It's all about mobility, strengthening the shapes uh, by being in them and being able to work them. They're workable. So from wherever you are, let's lift those hips up, everyone. Good, and then let's reassess that right leg back into downward facing dog. And this is where we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Inhale to your plank. So your legs are nice and straight, knit the belly button in, you're right up on those toe pads. And then slowly begin to lower your knees, but let them hover. Let them hover for five. Knit the belly button in for four, for three, two, and then lower the knees down. I'm gonna reassess them onto my blanket. Press your bum back towards your heels and then open up through the left arm. So twisting today, I know, we're getting into our twist. And then from here, oh, lean back. Good, then release the left hand, back into your tabletop, hover the knees up off the floor, just an inch or two, two knit the belly button in. Press the floor away, make sure your elbow creases are facing your thumb and index finger for five, for four, three, two, and then lower the knees down. Sit back towards your heels, lift up through the right arm. Nice little, like think of this as a twist and a lean back. Oh, can you broaden the collarbones? Get your shoulders out of your ears. Good job, everyone. Exhale, release the right hand, hover the knees back up off the floor. Okay, for five, for four, three, two, one. Downward 
facing dog. In this downward facing dog, reassess your feet and let's play with that left leg once again, three limb down dog. Bend that left knee, bring that left knee up towards your chest as best as you can, however you get it there. Then the left foot carries over towards the right side of your mat. Somewhere between the hip and the right hand, heel toe it that much further over towards the right and then square your shoulders, come to the inner edge of your right foot and everyone, let's play with that right arm up towards the sky. Press into the inner and outer edge of your feet, open up your heart, press the floor away with that left hand. Good, exhale, release the right hand, pivot back to the balls of the left foot or right foot and take that left leg back into down dog. You've got it, inhale that beautiful right leg up towards the sky, bend the knee. Shoulders over wrists, left knee crosses over to the outer edge of the right foot. Mm -hmm. Got it, inner edge of left foot, open up. So you're pressing the floor away with your right hand, so you're externally rotating. If this is not for you right now, just pay attention. Practice the belly breathing, such a great practice. Release the left hand, draw that right leg back into your three limb, two, down dog. Exhale, float the knees away from the floor, tabletop, shoulders over wrists for five, for four, three, two, knees to the mat, toes still curled under, sit back onto your toes, open up through that left arm. So this is the way, you know, when you start to find out what works for you, you will figure it out. Never, never, ever surrender. Give up, I mean, surrender. Yeah, you want to surrender, but never give up. Let's do the other side. Mm, mm, mm. And really, I've been told not to use the word never, and that's a good thing. You don't need to say never. Nothing is never. Good. And then mindfully sit back onto your shins. We're going to open up those knees again and bring your big toes to touch. We did this at the beginning. Lengthen the tailbone down. Just going to go more forward. And then ah, strengthen. Right there. Strengthen. Feel that. Observe that. So even if you can stay back for a couple of breaths, that's awesome. And press back up. Exhale, bum to your heels. Knees come towards each other. Tabletop. Let's walk the knees further back so that you're not quite in a tabletop with the knees underneath your hips. Take your hands a little bit more forward. Turn your elbow creases to face forward. Lift your feet up off the mat. Tone the belly button in. And then start to lean your shoulders over your wrists, but keep the belly knitted in. Then start to bend your elbows now, lower your pubis, bend the elbows back and the pubis, plant or flex your feet, lower your rib cage to the floor, extend through the crown of the head, then sweep your arms straight back, palms face each other, reassess your legs by hugging them in towards each other, lift the front of your shoulders, extend through the crown of the head, and this is all back, and feel that one, eh? Roll those shoulders back, lengthen through the crown of the head, Lengthen that tailbone for five. Really press into the tops of your feet for four. Spread your toes for three. <sighs> for two. That's it. You know, just keeping your, your wits about you. And sometimes just do what you can do. Stack your hands underneath your forehead. Heels towards your bum. A little windshield wipe. I've lived decades of really pushing and shoving. And I'll be honest with you. You arrive at some other place going, well, oh, that really was way too much. Why didn't I just slow it down and pay more attention to the pain and not get to the point where there's pain and really love myself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I could write, I probably will write a book about this whole thing about pain, no gain. <laughs> That's another story. Okay. So from here now, come into your sphinx arms. Really gravitate towards grabbing the floor with your base knuckles and index fingers. Curl your toes under. Now, this is really important for hugging in. In order to have mobility, we must strengthen, right? Foundation first. So foundation first, hug muscle to bone, muscle energy. So from your sphinx, shoulders, arms, draw your elbows towards your toes, toes towards your elbows, and lift your inner thighs up. So you're hugging your inner thighs in of each other. Lengthen through the crown of the head so you look straight at your thumbs. Knit that belly button and then lengthen your tailbone towards your heels. And then isometrically drag your toes towards your elbows for five, for four, for three, two. And then slowly lower the knees. Blossom your bum, like literally like a bunny lifting its tail. 
Walk one hand underneath the shoulder, then the other hand underneath the shoulder. And then reassess your hands. And then move your spine through cat-cow. When you move your spine through cat-cow, your spine will love you and say, oh, thanks for that. Beautiful. So just wanted to come back into this position because it's really important to remind yourself that this is every body part we're activating today. Let's come back onto our forearms with our knees bent on the floor. So notice how that feels. See if you can tidy up your arms. A lot of you do have issues in your shoulders and there's lots of episodes for shoulders, trust me. So I like to use my block between my index fingers and thumbs and bring my elbows in more taut. Really getting into those forms. A lot of you having issues with getting your index knuckle and finger thumb down and your thumb down, you can email me for any questions. We can even do a private Zoom practice if you can't make it into studio. I am here for you. So once you have your forearms down, and not that I appreciate Zoom so much, this is awesome. Curl your toes under, float the knees up. But if you need personal help, I'm there for you. Once you lift your knees up, start to walk your feet back just that much more and then bring your shoulders directly over your elbows and then lift those inner thighs up once again. So in this position, plank position, if you need to lift your hips a little higher because that feels better, please do. Breathe your breath into your belly, dive around, lengthen the tailbone towards your heels, extend the crown of the head forward for five. Really root through those base knuckles, especially the index finger for four, for three, two. Mindfully lift the hips, lower one knee than the other knee. This time bring your big toes to touch, sit back into a child's pose. You can also use your block for your mind's eye and surrender. There you go just like that. Surrender. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Notice. Three more breaths. We're tapping into all of the body parts today. As much as we can in the 45 minute practice. And then very mindfully roll yourself up to sit on your shins, just temporary. Take a moment to do a nice little swing around into your seat. I'm going to provide myself with my yoga bolster. And once you arrive up into your cross leg seated position, you could use your blanket if that is something that interests you. And then take your left leg out in front, roll your shoulders back, open up your arms, your palms are supine, palms facing up like you're holding soup bowls. And then feel the opening of your chest by taking your thumbs back without popping your ribs forward. Just like that, good. Nicely done. Now reach the left arm up, turn your face towards your left armpit, grab a hold of the back of the skull, and then turn your right palm down, thumb down, palm facing back, tuck your head in, and then play with this right arm. What does that feel like? Whew, can you tuck your head in, but keep your spine nice and tall to your best ability? Hmm, play. Close your eyes. So we're not pushing or shoving. We're feeling length in the muscle and contractions. So what one side is lengthening, the front is contracting, the back is lengthening. Got it? Two more breaths. Whatever you do with this right arm is yours. Maybe it feels good to tuck it behind you. Maybe that's too much for your anterior shoulder. Press your head hand back against each other. Nice. And when you're ready to release, release and pause at the center. Just Pause. Yeah. Switch out your shins. I always, you, you, you want to balance it out. If I ever forget in an episode, just remind yourself to switch out your shins. I do forget things. Okay, right arm, left arm, palms up, supine. Take your nose towards your right armpit, reach that right arm up, grab a hold of the occiput bone, the back of the skull. Turn that left palm to face down and behind you, thumb down and reach that left arm back and then tuck your head down. Feel that all the way in your throat chakra, activating your throat chakra. What do you need to say? Can you knit the belly button in? How much energy you put into this is yours. You can play and manipulate that left arm if you feel there's another option for you. You do you. What does that feel like? Remember, we don't want pain. Discomfort, absolutely. There's no need for pain. Your body will not respond well with pain. Just like if you push someone or they just get agitated and they just react instead of respond. So your body does the same thing. It will react instead of respond. Be kind. Two more breaths wherever you are in this. Mm. Oh, there you go. My ear just popped. And then inhale back to center. 
That's amazing. Roll your shoulders, wiggle your jaw. You can switch out your shins again if you want to. This is our final part. Interlace your fingers across your tummy. And ladies, please be easy on yourself. And guys too, you may PMS too. But when you're in that place where you're bloated and stuff, just let yourself be. Quit criticizing yourself. Trust me, I've been there so many times. But love the tummy. Love yourself. This is your personal power. Love yourself. Okay? There's no right or wrong. And remember, people don't remember the shape you were, what you look like. They remember the kindness and the love that you represent that you are they remember your energy not what you look like so be kind to yourself so as you hold your belly flush everyone close your eyes and breathe into your hands into your belly with gratitude gratitude for your existence gratitude for your body your vessel gratitude for just being you may you find it in your heart to really love yourself yeah love yourself as is Treat yourself like with the most amazing love and unconditional love. So I offer that at this final moment together here that you look in towards your mind's eye as you breathe into your belly flesh, roll your shoulders back, lift your heart brightly. Think kind thoughts of yourself. All these beautiful qualities about yourself. Love, love, love. Mm-hmm and then more love. Yeah. Let us slowly bring our hands down together at the heart center. Interlace your fingers, palms across your chest. So all your fingers are crossed, thumbs are wide apart. Truth mudra. Just sit with yourself. Just rest. Don't worry about time. Breathe your breath into your heart. Kindness. How may you be that much more kinder to yourself? Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's end this practice with a beautiful sound of Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. A deep breath in. Less is more and slow down. And if that was like a little bit speedy for some of you, that's okay. We're all at different levels of being. But for those that are really rushing through life, I do offer that slow down. That's where the recovery is. Namaste, everybody. Hope to see you in the next episodes. There are now three episodes of Restore and Breath are tied in with meditation and then core breath as their usual. Have a fantastical day. Keep on loving yourself. And again, I mentioned that you can email me if you need to do a private. You would like to do a private with me for any issues and concerns that you have and you can't make it into studio. I'd be more than happy to make you a private video.